Welcome to Sapka TV. Today we are going to um, have a discussion on live update with Priyanka, um, Member of Parliament, Labour Party, New Zealand. She is um, se uh, Private Secretary to um, Ethnic Community Minister um, of Labour Party. Uh, Priyanka, welcome to Sapka TV. Thanks, Rajiv. Thank you for having me on your show. Priyanka, first of all, can you please quickly update us on uh, uh, what's going on in live? I've, you have seen PM live, but what's uh, more onto it? What's the internal information you have onto um, COVID-19 from going from level four to level three? How likely it is to go on level three uh, coming few weeks? Um, yeah, look, I mean, you know, as the Prime Minister has said um, in her stand up as well, that is a decision that Cabinet will make next week. So right. we will know whether we can, um, you know, whether Alert Level 4 will be lifted then. Um, she has ruled out the fact that uh, we'll come out of it early, which is, which is good because we don't want to lose the advantage that we have um, or the gains that we've made by going hard and going early into Alert Level 4 um, thus far. So I guess we'll find out uh, next week. However, this week there will be a little bit more information put out about the various alert levels, what people can expect at the different alert levels uh, in terms of education, recreation, transport, work, um, uh, and so on and so forth. So uh, there will be more guidance put out um, uh, over the course of this week. Also, Treasury is doing some economic modeling. The finance minister spoke to the Epidemic Response Select Committee this morning um, and talked about some of the different scenarios that we might expect. As everyone will understand, COVID-19 will have a huge economic impact um, on New Zealand, as it will globally around the world. So looking at, uh, you know, Treasuries looking at some of the modelling that they can do uh, to look at how best to protect the economy as well. Right. Uh, for those who, although Priyanka doesn't need any introduction, for those who's watching us overseas, I might repeat it again. Priyanka is a list MP for a Labour Party New Zealand, and uh, she is a private secretary to uh, ethnic community minister in New Zealand government. Priyanka, can you please, uh, on touch base, uh, let our audiences know what is your role actually in the government? What do you do? How do you report? And what issues you touch? And uh, what's your main role in government? Yeah, sure. So the full title is quite a mouthful. It's the Parliamentary Private Secretary to the Minister for Ethnic Communities. And what that really means is that I work closely with uh, minister, the Minister, Honourable Jenny Salisa, who is the Minister for Ethnic Communities. Um, and so I um, have, you know, I meet basically with her every week to discuss what some of the issues um what some of the issues are, uh, what I'm hearing at the grassroots level. And we have a discussion about that and I relay to her issues um, that need decisions made or issues that the government needs to be needs to be aware of, basically. Um, it also means that when the minister is unable to attend events, um, I speak on her behalf and I speak on behalf of, of the government. Um, and um, yeah, that, that, that's largely it. So as the minister herself says as well, if people can get through to her, they can get through to her through me. Uh, and that's really my my role as the private secretary, uh, as to keep her informed of various issues. So I, I encourage people to continue to come to me with some of the issues that they need uh, government decisions to be made on um, and issues that they basically feel that government should be aware of. Well. Right. Priyanka, um, before we deep um, go dive and um, go and dive deep in this issue, currently hype was um, they are seen in uh, social media, on the social media uh, Facebook page, uh, that a lot of Kiwis are stranded overseas. And one of the major chunk is in India too. And uh, we have seen and we have been following your uh, feed and your uh, feedback on those uh, social media feeds. Um, what's the update? What's happening? People stuck in India, especially citizens and residents are other uh, people like temporary visa students, uh, they are going to be uh, affected. They are going to be included in coming arrangements. What arrangements has been done? Can you please uh, give us update on that? Yeah, sure. Um, so that's an issue that was brought to my attention. Um, and um, now I understand there are roughly about 770 New Zealanders 
um, who have been stranded in India in various states across India, as the information, um, uh, as I understand it. I raised that directly with the Prime Minister last week, um, and she had said at that point that she would look into it and look at what could be done from the point of view of repatriation flights and so on and so forth. Um, so that, as you know, is a decision for the Minister of Foreign Affairs uh, to make. That sits within MPAP's purview. That's the Ministry for Foreign Affairs and Trade. Um, and it's an issue that I've been following up on to get some updates on. I know that it was an incredibly challenging and complex issue uh, for the Minister deal with and to work through. Um, however, yesterday um, an announcement was made by the minister that, um, that, that the government's basically working with airlines and international partners, working through the complexities and the challenges to be able to bring those New Zealanders back home to New Zealand from India. Um, as you'll know, though, at Alert Level 4, we have strict border control measures in place. Uh, which means basically that the border is closed to anyone who's not a New Zealand citizen right. um, or per permanent resident as well. So that will remain. Um, my understanding is that the flights that will be uh, looked into will be for New Zealand citizens and permanent residents. However, people may know that there is an exemption process in place by Immigration New Zealand, and that's for specific categories of people. Uh, it includes partners of New Zealand citizens and residents, and right. more recently, also partners of temporary workers here. So I would um, encourage anyone who is in that position and who may be watching uh, to go on to Immigration New Zealand's website. I'll share the details on my Facebook page after this as well, and you may wish to share uh, the links also. Um, yeah. But there is a form. It's called the Request to Travel to New Zealand form. Um, and basically, that's how one would make a request to Immigration New Zealand for an exemption so that they can come back to New Zealand, even though the border uh, is closed. I will say, though, that the um, criteria to, to, be, to, to get that exemption is quite strict. So apply if people think that they fit that criteria. I, I do know that there are a number of temporary workers um, you know, people on temporary visas, whether that's work visas or student visas, um, who are in India at the moment and wish to travel to New Zealand. I've been contacted directly by many of them. Um, those are concerns. I know that many people are over there still paying rent here. You know, they still have vehicles, some have loans that they're repaying in New Zealand as well. And I understand that it's incredibly challenging uncertain times and that leads to frustration well. yeah and that so that contributes one of the thing is when people are in panic mode that makes mm -hmm. things harder and i would like to know what, what were the challenges i've seen your prompt response on social media and we all appreciate and many people have appreciated live on social media as well uh, okay. however i would like to know what's your reaction although one of the newspaper has picked up uh, and seen your comments as obstacle and uh, criticizing India or India. Uh, what's your, what, was that your intention or what was your reaction on that? Uh, if I you can. I actually read that article, I must confess. Um, I, I have had people allude to it, write to me to say that, um, that that's not the impression they got from my comments. Uh, so I can't respond directly to that article. However, it was never my intention uh, to criticize India or any other government um, right. for that That's matter. I'm often you know, hear, myself. Yeah, um, yeah my, my only, um, the reason I guess that I jumped on social media and commented on some of the threads was because those people have contacted me privately as well. Uh, and I just wanted to make sure that the information I was sharing privately to people um, could go a little bit broader. I just wanted people right. to know that, um, you know, as a member of parliament, I'm hearing their concerns. I will raise them as appropriate, either to the Prime Minister or relevant ministers, uh, and follow up on that, which is um, the role of a member of parliament. And yeah. so I just wanted people to know that that was happening behind the scenes. I understand their frustrations um, as well. And so I just wanted people to hang in there and hold fire while some solutions were being worked through. Yeah. Priyanka, one of the challenge I as for my knowledge was that few people are residents and few citizens some hold indian passport and some hold uh, oci card so people who are citizens have new zealand passports they have no issues with in transit flights coming through australia or other countries but people who have indian passport they have got further 
uh, complications like complexities to arrange in transit visa for Australia or other countries, they might have restrictions of transit visa. Also, some of the restrictions are also within India that they cannot travel to the airport uh, using their own private cars. So what are the complexities you come to know uh, when, when you were dealing with this issue directly with the people stuck in India and uh, how did you elaborate this? How did you elevate this to PMO and what is the outcome? What did you do and where we are now? Yeah, so I mean, I, as I mentioned previously, I was being contacted directly by people who um, were stranded in India. And just from uh, the people who had been emailing me or sending me Facebook messages, I could tell that they were spread across India. They weren't just sort of all contained in one state. And as we all know, um, those of us who are from uh, India, we know that it's a large country and there's quite a bit of distance to be traveled between places, somewhere in villages in various regions as well. Um, and so um, so I guess that's where my comments came from in terms of the fact that this is... Yeah, and the same comment was mentioned in the Honorable uh, Minister Vincent Peters as well. Same, same uh, language, uh, different words, but same uh, meaning was in the same letter, uh, Mr. Vincent Peters mentioned in his letter. Yes, that's right. So I, I noticed in the press release uh, that came out yesterday that it was very similar. He, he too mentioned that it is, uh, you know, it has been challenging uh, and is a complex issue. Um, now, my role, just to clarify, my role is to listen to what people are saying and to feed that through to the government. My role ends there. Uh, it, it also includes following up so that I can right. feed back to people what's going on. My role is not to make the decision. That's the minister's role Correct. Um, and the ministry's role. So they would then work through what the, you know, the details of the complexities are, the details of the challenges, the types of visas that were needed. I know that countries that we would have ordinarily transited through, like Singapore, had shut their borders to transit flights as well. So those are all challenges that the ministry and the minister together would work through. Um, and I know that they were doing that, but the details of that, of course, you know, remains with the minister's office. Um, but I'm really pleased with the outcome. I'm pleased that there has been a successful um, outcome that would then at least alleviate some of the worries that people who are there, New Zealanders who are there in India, would, would, would have been experienced. Yeah. Now, there are some of the information still cloudy. People don't know how much it will cost them and uh, how it will be and uh, how many uh, flights are arranged. So do you have any update on the cost associated per head to the citizens? Well, I understand that the cost will be very similar to a, a repatriation flight that was organized from Peru, for example. Um, I don't have details of exactly what that would be, but I understand the mechanism that will be used uh, is the Safe Travel New Zealand uh, website. So people who are in this position in India or anywhere else in the world should make sure that they register with Safe Travel New Zealand. I also understand that there is um, a 24-7 uh, line that has been set up by our mission in India, the New Zealand High Commission in India. Uh, and that's a number for people to call if they have financial hardship, but they want to get on this flight. So that's the information that I'm happy to share um, after this as well. I don't have the number on me at the moment, but I can share that uh, with you and on my Facebook page. Sure, we, we can so, share so there, that. There are likely to be options um, and people will be informed of the details flight and the cost of the flight through safe travel museum. Just one more question uh, in regards to uh, people stranded in India. Is there any nominated person from um, um, government's behalf uh, who is also stuck in there, who is uh, nominated as uh, officiating or um, person to be contacted, a reliable person, a a any name put forward? Sorry, to be contacted for what purpose exactly? Uh, to to gather people at one place uh, so that uh, right. vehicles can be arranged, uh, arranging someone uh, at one place from different parts of India could be a challenge. We need a yeah. person who can handle that uh, with some qualities. So I'm asking you if you know anyone who you are communicating with. I, I saw on social media, uh, there was feed from uh, Mr. Kharak Singh. Uh, I, is he the person who is in touch with you or uh, is he the person who is taking lead forward from India? Um, look, there are many people who have been in touch with me who are in a similar situation. From the government's point of view, it's MFAT, Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade, um, along with our mission in India that will be organising this and the finer details of it. Uh, and I know that they are. 
However, Safe Travel New Zealand is the mechanism through which information will be sent out to people who are there and who want to travel back to New Zealand. So that's why I keep emphasizing the fact that people must register uh, with Safe Travel New Zealand or they'll be missing out on some of that information. Right. Uh, I just wish to, if we can get hold on one of the person who was stuck in India, and uh, is it possible if we can ask live them if they have any uh, obstacles or if they need further assistance from New Zealand government? Is it okay? I'll quickly. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, and they, you know, are you having them on now? Yeah, I'm just trying to get hold on if they can be um, connected through phone call, and I have do have a phone number of. Uh, Mr. Kharak Singh, if he can answer the call, it's quite early in the morning. Sure. Ha hello, sir. Hello. Uh, hi, uh, Kharak Singh ji. This is Rajiv, uh, live on Sabka TV, along with uh, Priyanka Radhakrishnan, uh, member of Parliament, uh, New Zealand um, government. And uh, I just wanted to know, is there any thing else uh, New Zealand government can do? Your, any message you want to um, give it to uh, Priyanka or uh, New Zealand government? Any assistance you need from New Zealand government? What sort of obstacles you're having? First of all, good morning to you. I believe you. Good afternoon. It's a bit early here. Thanks for <laughs> quoting me in a bed. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I'm off. <laughs> Hi, Priyanka. Good morning to you. Good afternoon. Good, yeah, good afternoon to you and good morning from here. Bharat Namaskar Sabko Apko New Zealand. Uh, yeah, we are doing fine. Uh, it was a great news by New Zealand government and uh, under the leadership of uh, uh, Honorable Prime Minister and Vincent Peter and the Labour government. I really thank you from the bottom of my heart that uh, we now looking forward to come home. I know it is very, very risky uh, and we would love to stay put here, but due to families back home, we would love to be with our families because we are worried both ways. So mm, that is sure. first. Uh, yes, I know it is. Uh, it was a very, very hard working. As you know, I've been uh, tirelessly last three days. I had minimal sleep. As you see, Facebook was very hot. Groups were going. <laughs> so, yeah. So now I believe uh, New Zealand government is uh, uh, waiting for the instructions through Safe Travel Embassy. There is a lot of, uh, uh, you, there is a lot of uh, unsettling things because people are locked in in different parts. There is calls coming in from Orissa, Vishakapatnam, Gohati, Assam. So, so Singh ji, one question. Is there any, any um, uh, person who's taking lead in this uh, mission, I would say, at this stage to gather everyone at one place uh, going forward? Yes, now now we are waiting for the instructions from New Zealand website, which is Safe Travel, which is uh, run by New Zealand government. Embassy instructions will be issued to us. Before uh, before this, uh, I was in a discussion on the charter planes, uh, just like uh, on the template what Australia was doing. So right. I, I was I was involved in that. So because I wanted to get home. And I was in touch with the guys who are organizing the flights, charter planes uh, from uh, New Delhi to Australia. So now New Zealand government is taking responsibility and also organizing uh, for us. So we will wait uh, the instructions from the government. Right. Priyanka, um, that's, that's really good. Thank you, Kharak Singh Ji. No problem. And thank you, Priyanka. One only question thing is now uh, we will uh, thank you once again for all the efforts anybody has put in in this. I really love them from bottom of my heart. There are a lot of desperate people want to get home. Yeah, no, I, I totally take your point. I can understand the frustration and the uncertainty that people are facing. It is challenging times. Uh, thank you for that. I'll pass your um, message on as well. Good to hear from you. Take care and stay Yeah, stay thank safe. you. Yes, thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, yeah, that's that was really good to hear from uh, Karak Singh Ji. I was not sure whether he will be available or not because it's quite early um, in sure. India. Um, but took a chance. And, and that tells us that what's the current situation. And I was reading all the comments. A lot of people are not aware of what's going to happen with the temporary visa holders whose mm -hmm. visas are running out. And... Uh, 
more it lingers, more it lags, more problems are associated with the current situation because uh, it's also extended. The lockdown is extended in India. And uh, now that's really good. Any, any, um, anything you can recall from latest update uh, when Honorable Prime Minister updated on uh, what's happening with our uh, recent tests over the long weekend, there were less testing. So do you think we are going in the right direction and it will be over very soon or it will be um, still more um, lockdowns we can expect? Yeah, um, testing and contact tracing are both ramping up, actually. So I think the comment that you're referring to was one that the Prime Minister made. Um, and the point that she was making is that generally over um, a long weekend and over public holidays, people don't go out and get tested as much. And that's uh, likely what we saw. It's not that testing capacity has gone down. So our testing capacity has been consistently increasing. And I think off the top of my head, it's something like 60 close to 63,000 um, tests that have yeah. been um, undertaken to date. Um, and you would have seen from, you know, the daily updates that the Director General of Health, Dr. Ashley Bloomfield provides, um, you'll see that the numbers are coming down. We've always, government has always been clear that we want to flatten the curve um, and that we also want to see numbers come down. However, that is not just to, emphasize the message from the government and the Director General of Health that is not, um, there's no room for complacency, even though we're seeing some gains. And um, Prime Minister has said that she was, she's, you know, cautiously optimistic. Today, the Director General of Health has said that he's actually quite optimistic in terms of where we're going. The trajectory that we're on looks positive, but we can only maximize those gains if people continue to stay at home. Yeah, um, so far, so COVID... Level four will not be lifted early, basically. Yeah. Um, and as I mentioned at the start, the decision will be made by cabinet next week as to whether we get out of alert level four after the initial four weeks as um, as was uh, the plan when we went into alert level four. We do need to be careful about this though because Absolutely. there's no point sort of getting out of it really quickly. And then we're still seeing cases and we can still, you know, every single case that we get now could have a story that sits behind it that involves a whole cluster which That's will right. then potentially lead to more deaths. So we do need to take this seriously and be careful about it. Yes. As PM said, um, uh, Honorable Jacinda, um, she said, one case unidentified going in public could mm -hmm. lead up to 80 cases of COVID positive uh, cases. So it's really uh, right. quite um, impacting our um, communities directly, especially coming from community and passing on being, uh, being passed on in community that is the dangerous mm -hmm. stage and uh, we have yes. we have done really well we don't want to take a u-turn quickly and and we are right. with with our government and we, our government is doing great as far as the whole world is concerned whole mm -hmm. world is struggling new zealand is um, showing really good results um, and hats off to our leadership hats off to our public too uh, what yes, message? The collective uh, effort. Yeah, um, yeah. Everyone who's staying at home is saving lives, so we're doing this together. Yeah. What message you would like to give in the end uh, to our communities, um, uh, Priyanka? Um, look, I'll, I'll just say a huge thank you to everyone who is staying at home. Largely, we, we're doing well, as you said as well. Um, and that's down to everyone who's staying at home, who's staying in their bubbles um, and save, saving lives by doing that. Um, I also just want to say that, um, you know, in my role as the private secretary to the ethics community's minister, um, I've been sort of keeping an eye on uh, the really good work that so many of our organizations are doing around the country, whether that's community organizations, religious organizations, or sporting organizations within our ethnic community space. Many are going out of their way to help families and individuals who need a little bit more support. And I want to say a huge thank you to them as well. Also, many of our people from our diverse communities are essential workers at the front lines. And it's because of them and their service that the rest of us can actually stay at home um, and you know focus on breaking the transmission of this virus. So a huge thank you to them also. Finally, a, a huge thanks to you and to other ethnic media outlets because one of the concerns that the ethnic communities minister had at the start of this whole process was that we need to make sure that government's messages get out to all our communities. 
um, you know, regardless of where they are, what language they speak, and so on and so forth. And so our ethnic media plays a huge role in ensuring that happens. Um, so thank you too. Yeah, always my pleasure. Uh, Priyanka, thank you very much for sparing your time. And uh, this is what the purpose is, to uh, bridge the gaps uh, amongst communities. And uh, media's role is also very important. So thank you very much for your time and effort That's to cool. raise this issue to PMO and uh, making it in their priority list. And now we can see the positive results. Thank you. Thank you. Huge thank you for your efforts. Not at all. Just doing my job and I'll continue to advocate for our communities and their progress. Thanks for having me on your show. Thank you. You have a great day. Thanks, you too. So this was Priyanka, and um, uh, I would like to thank all the listeners and watching uh, pro who are watching the program. And please um, let everyone know that as a New Zealand, we are one team and facing this tough time together. Thank you very much.